Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Using Variables and Equations to Solve Problems. This is part one. To solve what kind of problems? Well, typically word problems. You know, a lot of people will say, I know how to solve an equation, but why do I care? Well, the reason we have equations, or the reason we use them, is to solve real world problems. And as you learn more and more math, of course, we can learn to solve more and more complex kinds of equations and solve more real world problems. Here, we're going to solve a few word problems that are fairly simple, but allow us to practice our skills with equations. So here is the first problem. It says Cassie sold four pies for $12 each and Gary sold 11 cookies for $3 each. Write and solve uh, an equation to find D, how much more Cassie earned than Gary. So first of all, I'm gonna say, we can read this problem several times and realize that we don't really need an equation to solve it. I mean, I know you're looking at this and saying, well, I can calculate how much Cassie made and I can calculate how much Gary made and I can subtract them to figure out how much more one person earned than the other. Of course you can do that, but that isn't the point. The point is we want to write it in an equation form to get practice with equations. Because then, many years from now, when we take the training wheels off, then you're solving problems that no one's ever solved before using these tools called equations. So just because you can look at it uh, and solve it doesn't mean that what we're doing here doesn't have any value here. So we wanna calculate, it says, uh, find a, write an equation to solve for D, which is how much more uh, Cassie earned than Gary. So we go back to the problem. It says Cassie sold four pies for $12 each. So the amount of money that they make, Cassie makes, is four times 12, right? So we don't want to write the number down. We want to write an equation down. So four times 12. Now this uh, amount of money here is how much money Cassie earned, right? Cassie, right? Four pies, $12 each. So we multiply that out. We know it's going to be $48. But then we also know that we have another person, Gary, and they sold... Uh, 11 cookies at $3 each. He sold 11 cookies at $3 each. So this is how much money Gary made, right? But the, the problem says, write and solve an equation to find D, which is how much more money Cassie earned than Gary. So if this is Cassie's money and this is Gary's money that they each earned, we're gonna subtract the two. So as I said before, you really don't need an equation to solve this. You know, uh, you could just calculate the money that, sh that she made and calculate the money he made and subtract the two. But we're writing it down in equation form with problems that are easier for you to understand so that down the road, you know, in physics and other classes down the road, when a problem is much more complex, you have practice with writing it in equation form, which we will have to do to solve some problems later. We're trying to find the value of D, which is how much more money this person made, and we follow order of operations. Four times 12 is 48, and 11 times three is 33, right? And 48 minus 33, you just subtract those, you get a five, you get a one, and 15. And what have we solved for? So what we have solved for is $15. And then I'll write down here, Cassie made more. That's a long way of, a long way of uh, writing down the idea that Cassie made 15 more dollars than Gary. That's all I'm really trying to say. All right, Cassie earned 15 more dollars than Gary. So as we go through these, some of these equations will be pretty obvious, like maybe you don't need to write an equation. And some of them, um, you know, maybe, maybe it isn't so easy for us to uh, just calculate the answer by reading the problem. And we use the equation, we need to write it down. Problem number two, it says, on Monday, Valerie walks three miles. She walked four miles on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, on both Tuesday and Wednesday, write and solve an equation to find T, the total number of miles Valerie walked. So we're writing an equation to find T, which is the number of miles that she walked. And it says on Monday, she walked three miles. So we know there's initially three miles there, but we add to that what she uh, walks on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's two more days where she walks four more miles on each of those days, All right? Now we could have written it as three plus four plus four, because there's two more days with four. We could have written it that way, but we're choosing to write it in a little, a little more of a grown up way, I should say with addition and multiplication, um, just to kind of give you a flavor of doing it a little differently. So she walks three miles, and on two additional days, four miles on each of those day, days. So altogether, order of operations says you do the multiplication first, two times four is eight, and then eight plus three is 11 miles total. Again, do you really need an equation to solve this? No. I mean, you could probably just figure this out by reading the problem and doing multiplying and adding, but that isn't the point. The point is very soon we'll have equations 
or, or problems that are really difficult to solve without writing an equation. Sometimes in physics and chemistry, you have to write more than one equation and use two equations to figure out the answer. And it's just impossible to do it without using equations. So we're building our skills here. So let's take a look at the next problem. Problem number three, it says, after recruiting seven new members, the math club now has 24 members. Write and solve an equation to find n, the number of members that the math club had before the recruitment. Notice in the first and second problem, we use different variables. We use t and we use a different variable. Here we're using n. So you're free when you write these equations to use whatever letter makes sense to you. This problem is telling us we're writing an equation to solve for n, which is the number of members the math club had before they did the recruitment. So it says, after recruiting seven new members, the math club has 24 members. So the way you wanna think about that is you have 24 members, right? But you have that after you started with some initial amount of members and added seven new members to it. So uh, you could, you could write it like this, or you could erase this and put equals 24 on the other side, same thing. But the idea is n is representing, the problem is telling us how many members the club had before we brought any new members in. But then we add seven new members, and then we have a total of 24. So how do we solve this equation, right? Not a, not a hard equation. Well, we want to get the variable by itself. And so we are adding seven, so we subtract seven from both sides of the equation. And on the right-hand side, this goes to zero. We just have n. What is 24 minus 7? What is 24 minus 7? 17. So n is equal to 17 members before. I'll just write before because basically you have seven, we had 17 members and then we went out and we recruited seven more. And then the uh, total amount is 24. If you stick that back in here, 17 plus 7 is equal to 24. So that is the right answer. All right, problem number four, it says, enrollment for a test prep class is 24 students this year, which is three times the size it was last year. Write and solve an equation for S, the number of students in the test prep last year. So S, you have to remember the variable letter is S, and we're using it to represent how many students we had in test prep last year. So there's last year versus this year. So it says, reading through the problem again, enrollment was 24 students this year, and that was, so you can just say that was, means it's equal to three times the size it was last year. So S is representing the uh, number of enrollment we had last year, and this year is 24 students, but that's three times the number of students we had last year. S is, is told in the problem statement that S is the number of students in the class, in the test prep class we had last year. So we need to solve this equation. So we rewrite it, 24, 3s. And what are we doing here? We're multiplying by 3. To get rid of that, we're going to divide by 3 on both sides. So 24 divided by 3 is 8, and the 3s cancel, and we have an s. So we say s is equal to 8 students last year. Why is it last year? Because it's told to us in the problem statement. S is the number of students in the test prep class last year. If we had eight students last year, and it says right here that this year we have three times the enrollment of last year, eight times three is 24, and then it checks out. And that's you know a pretty good example of, you probably could do that without an equation. I mean, like I said, these are not trying, we're not trying to come out of the gate with these impossible equations for you to solve, or these impossible situations. But I promise you, as we go farther along, you might write an equation down that's very difficult to do in your head or even just without even using an equation at all. All right, last problem. It says, after optimizing a program, the time it takes to run now is only two hours. If this is one third of the previous runtime, write and solve an equation for t, the amount of time the program used to take. So we have some program it runs, right? It takes some time t. Uh, and basically before we change the program, it took t units of time, t hours, let's say, to run. And so let's write an equation involving that variable t. It's telling us that we are optimizing a program, the time it takes to run is two hours, but that is only one third of the amount of time that we actually took before the optimization. It says uh, one third of the previous runtime. So when you say something like one, one third of the previous runtime, it means whatever it used to take to run, you multiply that by a third, and that value is now two hours. That's the new runtime. So t is the old runtime. Multiplying it by a third is two, which is the new 
runtime of two hours. How do you solve this equation? This one might be a little bit more tricky to solve in your head. I mean, you probably could still do it, but it's a little bit trickier. How do we get t by itself? Well, we have 2t multiplied by 1 third. We can do anything we want to both sides of this equation. And the problem is we have a t multiplied by 1 third. I want to get rid of that 1 third by multiplying by 3. And I can write this really as 3 over 1 if it helps you visualize. What's going to happen? The 3 is going to cancel with the 3, the 1 is going to cancel with the 1, and all of this is going to just reduce to just being an invisible 1 multiplied times t, and so you won't see it anymore. And so you'll just be left with t, and then 2 times 3 is 6, and so t is equal to 6 hours. Previous. Runtime. Right? Six hours previous runtime. And just check and make, se make sure it makes sense. It says, we optimize a program, it takes two hours. And that is one third of its previous runtime. Previous runtime is six times a third. Uh, six times a third is only two hours. You can multiply that, and put a six on top, and then six over three is two. And you can see that that makes sense, that six hours is the correct, uh, the correct value. So none of these equa equations are crazy hard. That's not the point. The point is to read a problem and write an equation. That is an important skill in and of itself. Just to write, read a problem and write down an intelligent equation that describes the problem. Notice here in this equation, we had to multiply by a fraction. In this equation, it involved multiplication and addition. In this equation over here, it involved uh, it involved just addition with the variable on the other side. Here, it involved multiplication times the variable. And here involved two different multiplications, but a subtraction between them. Totally different cases for all of these situations. It's really impossible to say, oh, when you're solving equations, just do it this way. It depends on the problem. And so there's a skill in reading the problem and writing down and translating it into an equation. Because when you get farther down into physics and calculus and other math classes, the problems are harder. And the biggest issue with it is that you have to read the problem and translate it into math. That's like it's like getting an ancient manuscript and translating it into a new language, and that's what we're doing here. So these problems are a little easier because I want you to understand intuitively how to approach it, but the point here is to write the equation and practice solving it. So I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Follow me on the part two. We'll get more practice with using variables and equations to solve problems.